Hi everybody and welcome to this fly tying video. For my pattern today I've chosen the lightning bug. It's a great all-purpose nymph that really doesn't represent a single thing. That's a really great thing about this pattern. This is part of my two minute tying tutorial which um, does not necessarily mean this video will be completed in two minutes. However, it does mean that this pattern, once you get comfortable with it, can be tied quite easily in two minutes or less. I already have a tungsten bead on this pattern, and the hook is an N204BL. Uh, that's a barbless hook put out by Allen Fly Fishing. I really love barbless, ho barbless hooks, um, especially in the shrimp and caddis one, because uh, this it, they're, they're so simple to just slip a tungsten bead over and just really start hammering out a bunch of these patterns. All right, I'm tying in some pheasant tail with my ADOT brown thread. I'm just going to tie it in, trim off the tag end, start to work my way down, but that's about all the further I'm going to go. Next, I'm going to tie in a little bit of ultra wire for the ribbing. This is a size small, hot orange ultra wire. For this uh, lightning bug pattern, this is one of the, the ways that you can vary it by really placing a lot of different colors in. Now, when I tie in my ribbing, and I'll show you the other side of the hook, I've tied it the whole way up, and it's really actually going into the bead. And I do that because whenever you tie in the body of the fly, which is actually just a tinsel, that body can really be dictated uh, by by uh, how much ribbon you put in underneath it because it will kind of turn on you at times and some funky things can happen. So that's why I like to place that, um, that ribbon the whole way up into the bead. All right, after I have that tie partway down the bend of the hook, I'm just going to put in a little piece of tinsel. Nothing crazy, just some cheap tinsel that you can buy around Christmas time. You don't have to worry about tying this in any special way. You do have to worry and make sure that it's locked in at the furthest point back where you want that initial wrap to start. I'm just going to bring it up, tie off its tag end, just build up the head just a little bit with some of this thread. Okay, I'm going to wrap a little weight the ways back, and I'm going to start wrapping this around. You want to make sure each wrap just slightly goes over that previous one because you don't want it sliding forward and, and uh, knocking it out of place. When you get up near the head, sometimes you'll want to really wrap this tinsel in quite a few, few times just to ensure that Everything is locked in. It's not sliding around, showing any gap from underneath. So I really do a, a decent job. I really like to build it up to make sure that tinsel's truly locked into place. Okay, after I have my tinsel cut off, I'm going to counter wrap my wire. So this, again, is going to be used for my ribbing. And I'm not sure if I previously mentioned this, but a great way to vary this, this pattern is to use different colors and different sizes of this wire. I'll show you a couple of these patterns at the very end of this. All right, let me get my wire cutting scissors, get that trimmed out of there. And then finally, I'm going to grab some SLF Spiky Squirrel Dubbing. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. Um, this is the color of burnt orange. Um, I do vary the head of this pattern with a couple different uh, colors of this. But I like the spiky scroll because the, these guard hairs really just seem to jump out of here. Okay, let me, so let me get some of this dubbed onto the, the thread. I don't go too heavy when I'm dubbing this on because they can get a little crazy there. And I don't like to cut those guard hairs necessarily because they don't, necess they don't look that great once they've been cut. Okay, I'm just going to wrap back a little ways and then finish off the head of the lightning bug with a quick um, half hitch. And there's my whip finish. You can see I might have a few little strands hanging. If so, I can simply grab them, pull them out of the way. There might be a couple underneath, and that's not really the biggest thing in the world. So this is the finished lightning bug. Um, if you do notice a couple things about the fly, you, you can kind of remember that I tied it with that hot orange ultra wire, and I have a gold bead. Here's another one of the patterns that I've tied. This is with um, some peacock dubbing at the front. It's got the tinsel, it's got the pheasant tail, but it also has some black ultra wire, and that wire is actually size medium, so it, that ribbing really just seems to stand out. And then finally, here's another one. Uh, this is with a chartreuse wire. It's got a pheasant tail, a little bit of longer tail on this one. I used that peacock dubbing at the front, uh, just some really like an ice dub peacock, and I used a rainbow colored bead, which really just seems to give it some different coloration. Again, remember that this fly is not really representing anything in particular, but just really meant to get the trout's attention, and that's a, what it will do with all that flash in there. 
All right, well, again, uh, this was on an Allen fly fishing hook, an N204BL. It was a size 16, but I will tie this anywhere between sizes 12 to 20. Well, thanks for checking out this video on the lightning bug, part of my two-minute tying tutorials. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them directly on this page, or you can always email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Here's one quick finished look at the fly. And then I will thank all of you guys for viewing this video today.